Hi, I'm Will Webb, and this is Everything I Watched in March 2023, in 10 words or less. I used to review films all the time on the channel, and I've basically stopped doing it now. Um, I might go back if there's a film that I really want to talk about, but for me, I'm kind of exploring other stuff in my film criticism. So it's a pleasure just to take like five minutes out here and give you a quick rundown of everything I've seen recently. And if you want to see more of these little like Bon Mot type reviews, then you can check out my letterbox, which I've linked here and in the description as well. So without further ado, let's get into it, starting with the second superhero film I've watched this year with a prominent anti-vaxxer lead. Tiny Man achieves little in overlong actors and green screen flick. Building on predecessor with new ideas, horror sequel worth the buzz. Sorry. I watched this for a meme and I was disappointed. Uh, this is one of the great directors, by the way, like one of my real favorites. Complete coincidence that I'm wearing this t-shirt. The last great theatrical frills from revered horror maestro. Nine words, wow. Uh, I'm really crowing about that one. You'll get it if you've seen the movie, it's got crows in it. Two career spanning themes, crime and family meet in latest. That's not great. Uh, Improvised family takes center place in charming law and order story. Sly Stallone sure can act, but James Mangold can't pace. How's that? This is fun, this is quite good. Uh, it's almost like when I was a teen, I used to do a lot of haiku writing. Uh, I know as strange as that sounds, but I loved the form of haiku. And I was actually in a chat room. This is really lame. I was in a chat room that only allowed you to talk in haiku format. So I got really good at improvising that syllable structure for a while. And I remember we had some placeholder lines. Um, if you couldn't complete your haiku or you needed some help to say something quickly in a conversation. And my favorite one was in between the sheets. The sun's coming out. We are wild. Why is he doing this? I'm trying to do these videos like much quicker now and try to be less perfectionist about it, um, but I've still not found the right setup for this room to have like the right amount of light on my face because I've got this massive window here and the sun just seems to change throughout the end of the day, which is the bit when I would really want to be doing these videos. So apologies for the change in color continuity here. Now the light's going to die off again because the sun's going by some cloud. And this isn't, this isn't quite right, right? Because now the only bit of light coming in is just under this blind. And so I've got this like quite horrific sort of like horror, like telling ghost stories at the campfire kind of lighting situation. Like, and then they went into the house and she said, Mary died 20 years ago in a car crash this very night. Okay, so massively side lit and now once again going out of color, but let, let's carry on. Let's, let's do as we need to do. Soapy romance elevated by charismatic performances from black acting royalty. Also this meme that's like, he's a good man, Savannah, is from this one. I was gonna say like middling comedy got me through waking up early because of work stress, but that kind of covers about half the stuff on this list. So uh, I've got to think about something more specific, haven't I? Um, low stakes, charming, but dull comedy is for the birds. We're just gonna try the creepy like mixed lighting because I think I'm gonna take forever kind of squinting and getting in and out of this light. Uh, so let's just carry on. Let's just keep going. Sorry for the, for the prevarication. Queer cult classic spies a caper but falls short. Cosmic superhero animation spaces out and sheds no light. Belated sequel short on magic but limps by on charm. Kids animation adaptation successfully raises stakes while skewering 60s style. There we go, that was good, that was a good one. Passive period drama trades passion for texture and invention. I actually really like this one, by the way, as well. There was a remaster of it, uh, which is why I watched it. I didn't watch the remaster in the end, uh, but it's on Netflix in the UK. It's a good one, Scorsese, it's very weird. This one was probably my second favorite um, superhero film with a lead anti-vaxxer that I saw this year. Scattered sequel offers little new, but plenty of charm. Plenty of family charm. There you go. Got to use all those words. I got to use as much as I can because I have so many. I'm trying to keep these like with some sense of grammar as well because I had an idea for this one, but I don't think I'm missing like a the just to be able to make the word count. I don't think that's. I'm not the Hollywood Reporter. I'm not Variety. I can't just start making this stuff up. Inventive, incisive, insightful horror with structural style, and perfect runtime. Stately study of landscape. I almost skipped one there. Stately study of landscape and loneliness with stellar performances. Stylish, playful, porny horror with plenty under the hood. Probing prequel in conversation with bigger and more developed sibling. 
And that's it. That's what I watched in March. Um, so this is going to be a, like a little regular series if you like it. Uh, so if you do like it, please let me know in the comments. It'd be great to know what you think about the format. And I'm happy to kind of play around with some other stuff. So if you have any suggestions about how I might approach it, I could rank them, for instance, or something like that, then uh, do let me know in the comments below. And if you want to follow me on Letterboxd, again, here's the information. It'd be great to have you there too, to get a little faster update on this, because we're all about information nowadays, right? We just want access to content constantly. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And I'll see you later. Bye for now.